So a couple of days ago, this fellow named Andrew tweeted, starting to think Miro might be a pain in the ass to deal with. At which point, Rob Viper on Twitter wrote a long deal that uh, ended up with 273,000 views. You should read it all the way through. I'm going to read it here. AW, he says, has a perception issue. Had it from day one. It isn't just to be accepted at the WWE level in the mainstream. It's also to be taken seriously within the pro wrestling bubble. Both continue to be equally hard to overcome. TNA and Impact was never able to do it. Wrestlers have grown up on only WWE. They see that as the only big league in town. So they have these MFers who spend years not even questioning the booking. They are fine going six months losing every match on Raw. You can get mad, but you never push back. You're in the big leagues. Then WWE throws you aside like trash. Lucky for you, although you, uh, how quickly we forget, there's an alternative. Same pay, some cases even better, lighter schedule, still on national TV. But these same MFers can't get past the fact that they aren't associated with those three letters anymore, WWE. TNA went through this with Christian, Booker T, big names from precious WWE, who were gracing TNA with their presence. They weren't there to give 100%. They weren't invested stop, in growth. Stop, well, hold on. Let me go through the whole thing. Okay. We'll, go, we'll go back. They were there to cash a check while keeping an eye on their phones to see if WWE called. I have long been an advocate that wrestlers need to always remember this is a business and protect themselves. If you aren't happy with your direction, you should speak up. This is your livelihood. It doesn't give you the right to outright refuse your boss, but you should have your say. I remember Becky Lynch returning to WWE and destroying Bianca in seconds on some show. Made her look like the biggest fucking afterthought goof. By all accounts, Bianca was cool with this. She's on record as saying she was happy to be part of a WWE moment. All right, then. If tomorrow Bianca decides to show her private parts and, God forbid, make some money WWE isn't entitled to get a share of, she's out on her ass next week. Eventually, maybe AW brings her in. How do you all think it goes if Tony pitches that she comes in so Jamie can kill her in 30 seconds? I'll bet you any amount of money in the world Bianca isn't happily agreeing and then talking about how thrilled she was to be part of an AEW moment. This is the thing that AEW is fighting an uphill battle against. Time will help because more wrestlers are coming along who don't see WWE as the be-all, end-all, and this is a good thing. But you're always going to have these types, especially those who tasted WWE before AEW, who will forever see anything non-WWE as a step down, so the same rules don't apply. Call it a sense of entitlement, whatever you want. These types will swallow anything shoved down their throats in WWE. They may cry on their little Twitch streams, bitch privately to friends, or have their significant others take up their cause with cryptic tweets, but at the end of the day, they do what the company wants. Isn't that interesting? You can't shut the door to all ex-WWE folks. That would be ridiculous and stupid. But in my opinion, what AEW may want to do is start vetting a little better. Really take a look at the type of people you are bringing in instead of just picking up any WWE cast-off in the hopes it works out. Everyone's management style is different, but maybe Tony needs a little Vince in him. In the sense, Vince would bring in these big names from other places, purposely put them in their place, both for his ego but also as a good test to see if they are there to play ball or not. There is no future for AEW if it revolves around wrestlers who are just using it as a stopgap until Uncle Paul is ready to take the uh, point picture again. I want to see AEW keep growing. Get over that perception hump will be a key sign. Things are going the right way. It's a great, it's a great series of tweets. I mean, one of the things I, I don't do disagree want to... with one word of that, by the way. Well, I, I do want to say because when when the mention with Christian is that when Christian was in TNA, he did work hard. Okay, there are guys there that that absolutely were sitting there waiting to get called back, but but when his contract was over, he did rush back. Even though they never, you know, they almost never beat him. They made him world champion. Um, and if you remember, WWE was before then was basically jobbing him. Um, even even though he was over, and one of the big things that TNA offered him was like, look, where you know you're better than they're giving you a chance to be and we'll go all the way with you. You know, Dion Warren really made that deal. And they made him world champion. They gave him like a one-year winning streak. And when they took the title off of him, they did it in a gimmick way to where he didn't really lose and and um, always protected him. But, you know, and, and, and again, like, I think he went there with the idea and then after being there for a while, perhaps just felt that, you know, TNA is very, very different from, from what, um, you know, AEW is in the sense that, they were never, you know, again, I'm not saying that AEW is going to beat WWE, but AEW was, you know, far, far, far more competitive than, than TNA ever was. It's not even close. Um, and because of that, you know, it, it is, you know, there's there's more money behind it. There's smarter people behind it. Um, you know, they're, you know, so so 
there's more of a future there. But I, I don't like Christian being like, yes, he did jump back the first chance he got as soon as his contract was over, even though he'd been treated well. Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, again, he did work hard when he was there. Okay, so that's a minor, you know, a minor aspect of that. I mean, as far as the other stuff, I mean, I completely agree that, you know, the, what, what I have found, and this goes to fans and it goes to wrestlers, is that the first wrestling that you watch becomes what you think wrestling is in a lot of ways. Um, when you're a wrestler, very often it's the not so much the first wrestling you watched, but the first wrestling you did. Like John Moxley was doing combat zone wrestling and a lot of really hardcore wrestling. So his kind of it's kind of like his the framework of his mentality. He went to WWE and he wasn't happy because to him that wasn't wrestling. Brian Danielson, you know, did you know the the you know New Japan Dojo and did all the indies all over the world, and it's like you know he you know. Per, on a personal basis, he loves Vince McMahon, but he was not thrilled with WWE wrestling. I mean, he used to say like how he and others, you know, that, that had the similar background would go, this isn't really wrestling. But, you know, they made a lot of money and they were happy and they had friends there and, and it wasn't like bad. They liked it, but it wasn't what they considered wrestling. And AEW or New Japan is closer to what he considers wrestling because of his start. When you have these guys, um, you know, I mean... Some of the guys did do indies for years and years and years, got to WWE, but WWE was always the goal and it was always the big leagues. Other people who watched wrestling all over the world and went all over the world, it's like WWE's a place. And yeah, we can make more money there, but it's just a place and it's no better or no worse than any other place. So you have those people and then you have the people who were signed by WWE that never did anything before WWE, never did the indie grind and things like that. And those people... As a general rule, when, when they're cut by WWE, um, I don't really see many of them um, being successful, um, you know, going elsewhere. And a lot of them won't even do anything elsewhere. Um, but with, you know, so and everyone's different. I mean, it's just like, um, you know, like Drew, Drew Galloway was so different from most of those guys cut by WWE in the sense that he was... I, you know, he wasn't even begging to go back. You know, I mean, he he just was out there. And it's like, okay, I'm going to go in there. And he just worked really hard. You know, this is during the peak of the UK indie scene, and he was a big part of that. You know, he went in there and um, went everywhere and did all this stuff, went to TNA, you know, was about to go to, was very close to going to New Japan. I mean, I don't know why it took so long because he should have been there years earlier, but it did. And then, um, you know, but WWE called, he went back, and, and ended up being, you know, obviously far, far more successful than he was the first time. But he's also the exception to the rule. And, um, you know, but it is it is interesting, you know, that there are guys, you know, in AEW that have caused, you know, a lot of problems um, there. Um, and, and, and they're very unhappy because they were with WWE. And they were even stars with WWE. And then they see guys who are on top in AEW who are never stars in WWE. And it kind of messes with their head because I've been to WWE. And I remember that, like, um, you know, on the indie scene, you know, like most of the ex WWE guys would, would go in there and I'm WWE. I don't have to do these bumps like everybody else. Some of them, you know, were not. Some of them were just like um, they were going to give their all or, you know, whatever. They didn't have that mentality. But, um, it, it's it's um, you know it's it is a very interesting thing, especially right now with AEW because they're in kind of this thing where they're 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 too big to be small, but they're not as big as WWE. And unlike a year ago, which is a big key, a year ago they were threatening to be very competitive, and now they are a very clear number two. And it's hard to be a number two in pro wrestling. Um, the nature of television being what it is right now, a number two can make it. And, and um, you know, with the right television deal, obviously with the right television deal, um, it, you know, AEW will flourish, you know, even if they struggle at the box office, as we've seen at the box office, you know, there was a period, you know, not that long ago where, you know, the average Wednesday AEW show outdrew the average Monday Raw show, um, which is unbelievable. But that was the case. Now, not even close. Um, it's tougher. You know, people, whatever it was in the last year, and we've talked about this to death, 
you know, it, it has benefited WWE. There have been things that have hurt AEW. There's perception issues. I think that the thing with, with um, you know, the the punk thing really hurt, really took the company down in a lot of ways. Um, and we've, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's, and, and, you know, again, like, uh, it's just a tougher road when WWE is, um, you know, a better product than they were a year ago. You know, and a lot of people went back to WWE, especially 35 to 49 year old age group, which is where AEW has been, been hurt lately. Um, you know, which used to be for the first two years was their dominant group. So, um, you know, um, as far as talent, you know, it's it's like talent is different. As as talent grows up, if they perceive two major leagues, um, then that perception won't be as bad. But also AEW has to now develop talent. And, and now WWE with NXT is doing a good job of developing talent. Uh, before, I, you know, I they weren't doing such a great job. Now they're doing a good job of developing talent. You look at the guys in the last year when I looked at the uh, Rookie of the Year list, you know, people who are in, and, you know, you see, you know, um, Braun Breaker and the Creeds and so many of these guys that had, that had just started in the last year that are really good because they're getting that chance to work. And now even more with the house shows and the AEW guys, um, they're not progressing as fast because they're not getting those same um, opportunities. I know that AEW is talking about doing more house shows and, you know, that's a, a thing, you know, I mean, it's a tough one because... Uh, house shows with underneath AEW talent will not draw and they will not be profitable. Um, I almost think that, 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 uh, that, you know, they could affiliate with somebody. I know that WWE with OVW, I don't know if OVW is the answer, but have, whether it's Dustin or, or, um, you know, QT or something, just run small shows, um, with those guys. So they get like, some matches in and do very low budget shows, you know, and only expect two, 300 people, not, you know, kind of like what NXT does on, on their road shows, as opposed to, you know, national touring, um, which I don't think is in AEW's best interest to do national touring, but they may try this year. So, um, but they do need to get, um, you know, these guys and, 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 and get their improvement level up. And in time, you know, um, you know, uh, again, you know, like, I, I mean, their future is so much dependent upon the TV deal, and that's out of everyone's control now because of the nature of television and the future, and nobody knows the future. You know, I mean, nobody knows the future for WWE. Nobody knows the future for, t for cable television. Nobody knows what's going to happen with streaming. Is there going to be streaming properties that are going to be offering tons of money to AEW? I mean, I don't know that that's the case because streaming is starting to cut back. But, um, you know, again, we're in very uncertain times right now. I think that uh, the thing with talent also is that uh, and everyone, every talent is different. And yeah. the ones that are unhappy, I mean, people are unhappy for all sorts of different reasons. And there's no one size fits all. I mean, the, the biggest one is there are wrestlers who they do this because it is their art. They want to be out there and they want to perform. And that's the most important thing for them. They want to get paid, obviously, and they want to get paid good money. But to them, they want to be out there working all the time. And there are others who are like, man, just pay me. And if you don't want to use me, that's fine. I just want to yeah, make but my that's money. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's a different generation. It is a different issue. generation, but they exist. And so I think that part of the issue here is, you know, one of the things with AEW is they sign, they have signed so many people. But too many guys for the, for the amount of TV time they have. You just can't do something with everybody. And it's funny because one of the things that absolutely drove me crazy about WWE a few years ago was when I would watch Raw – and I would see the same damn matches on every show over and over and oh, like every single week, the same matches. You still see that now. Well, though. you do, but it's less. And then in AEW, it's like we don't see those same matches all the time. And so, yeah, we could see, but, we could but, see, well, hold that, on, but, we but could this, see Death yeah. Triangle uh, versus the House of Black every week on TV if he wanted to. And they could work all the time, but that's not the way that he books. And so instead, House of Black, for example... It's like, when's the last House of Black match? Maybe they had some squash well, they match. Had, they, had, they, had, they had a squash match a couple weeks okay, ago. Okay, and then, but, you know, but, we but get a video part. the week after. We get a video the week after. We get a video the week after. You know, I'm sure those guys are like, dude, let's have some matches here. They have no matches on house shows to work. If they do do a dark and elevation, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a quick squash match. I mean, I think people want to work. Oh, and yeah. then, you know, there are other people that they don't want to do this program. They don't want to do a job here or this or that or whatever. Well, that's that's a different sort of problem. Then there's guys who get in fights. 
And, uh, you know, I advocated when Andrade got in that fight and punched somebody. It's like, well, he's out of here. Sit him out for three years. I don't care how much it costs. Like, the idea here is not the money. The idea here is you got to send a message. You're not going to get fired if you punch somebody. You punch somebody, you're going to sit at home for three years till your contract expires. you got to send a message to these guys. So in every situation, there's something different. But, I mean, but the, they, the but, biggest but, issue to me is all of the talent that you can't do anything with. But the, the problem, there's a problem, though, is that is that there are always going to be guys who are injured. And those guys, you know, are an expense and you're not getting any benefit from the injuries. But that is the nature of the beast that's going to be there with every company. But paying guys, you know, it's a lot of expense, especially because these are not low priced guys. Andrade is a perfect example. You know, pay a guy for three years so he can't go to WWE. You know, you're spending a lot of money that you could spend on, you know, three, four good talents if you're really going to sit them out. And, I mean, that's one of the issues. Like, whenever AEW signs somebody, in most cases, I go, like, why? You've got more guys than, you know, if it's a special case like Takeshita, Bandito, of course. But even them, Takeshita's running around on, on, you know, dark and dark elevation because there's not enough time to put him on um you know dynamite because they're focusing on the top guys and even rampage yeah he could be on rampage but usually when he's on tv his role is go out there for 15 minutes and have a freaking awesome match and lose and and eventually someday he'll be in one of those matches and he'll win you know i mean just like they did with darby and 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 all that i mean that it will happen and and bandito you know they signed him and he lost ethan page we haven't seen him since and it's like these are you know these are guys, and I mean, I don't think Bandito's unhappy because he has all kinds of work in Mexico anyway, and he's got his own promotion in Mexico. But, um, you know, like, again, I think that, um, you know, you so many of these guys, we see new guys in, and it's just like, why you've got, you know, and I mean, a lot of this comes from the Miro stuff. And I can, look, Miro worked, what was it, four or five matches all year, and yeah, he did turn down some stuff, and, and that, you know, he, he would have worked a lot more. But obviously, he's underutilized. I mean, it's like the idea of him being frustrated. It's like, of course he's frustrated. Of course Lance Archer's frustrated. These are talented guys. And it's not like, oh, Tony Khan's like a bad booker or anything. It's it's nobody can book with this much talent and um, this much television time. The way, the, the way, yes, they could do more with Dark and Dark Elevation. But for television, and you're sure they could do better matches on uh, Rampage, but it's still not going to fulfill, um, you know, what would be needed to make the best use out of all the depth of talent. I mean, if you really count the number of guys that they could put on TV and push in AEW, I mean, it's probably similar to WWE, and WWE's got, you know, four hours, and, and WWE, you know, focuses really on... WWE also focuses only on a few people. Um and AEW focuses on, you know, you, you, again, you're only going to have a finite number of stars. You can have 400 guys on the roster. Joe Silva and I used to talk about this. You can have 60 guys on the roster, get 400 guys on the roster. You're still only going to have 10 stars because that's that's the nature of the beast. Even if those 600 are far, far, far more talented than the 60 or the 400 is more talented than the 60, you're still only going to have 10 stars. Um, they, You know, again, your, your stars may be better, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's only the focused guys are going to be the ones who – make it whatever and then you've got these guys who all want to be focused guys and they'll all sit there and for different reasons they'll believe that they should be and they're not and um they're you know when with a big roster like that you're gonna have lots and lots of unhappy people and you do and um that's not gonna change because uh you know until he you know starts cutting people and he's not gonna cut people i don't think he wants the rep of being a guy who cuts people who are still under contract even though legally he can i mean he he has made it clear that if i sign you to a five-year contract i'm going to pay you for five years you know whereas if they sign you to a five-year contract uh you know they it's a 90-day contract but you know on the same token what has changed with vince out is uh wwe hasn't fired people either so now you've got um, so it, so the dynamic has changed, um, and WWE is stockpiling talent in the same way. Um, so you're going to have a lot of unhappy people. But with WWE, they will be um, 
my gut says that they will be much quieter unhappy about not being worked whereas with AEW um, they're more vocal and that reflects it sort of can reflect badly on AEW in some ways um, so there you go Granny let's do the wrestling report what do you got today put your laughing gear on <laughs> my laughing gear <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle uh, load <laughs> And Brian Hawks. I, I don't. That's what Vinny got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> oh wait a minute! It's wrestle Cade. Oh, oh well, that good. makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. I have right. never. I have. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo, and more, plus hundreds of archived shows all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.